welcome to Blunty Air. We realize you have a choice in airlines, and we celebrate your bravery for choosing us. I'm afraid drinks will not be served on this flight. Frankly, we consider it irresponsible for you to have arrived sober. Our pilot didn't. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times during our flight, as we are not insured for personal injury. So, hey, when it's completely maxed out, the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 can look astonishingly good, as I'm sure you've seen in the trailers. But the devs, Asorbo, are also remarkably good at optimization for lower end machines too. So hello again, I am Blunty, and I scored access to the currently running technical alpha of MSFS 2024. And one of the things I immediately wanted to try was if it can run on the likes of the RNG Ally here. Short version of that is, yes, as you can see, like its predecessor, it can, does, and will run just fine. So, while the ideal spec consists of monster hardware like the AMD RX 7900 XT, the RTX 4080, 12GB of VRAM, 64GB of system RAM, and appropriately high-end CPUs, the min spec is actually surprisingly low, asking for something as humble in the current day as the RX 5700 or GTX 970 and Ryzen 5 2600X CPU. A paltry 4GB of VRAM and 16GB of system RAM. And as the more technically minded of you will probably know, the handhelds like the ROG Ally running on AMD's Z1 Extreme chipset uh, have only 8GB of system RAM, half of that that MSFS 2024 min spec asks for, and that 8GB has to be shared with the GPU, so you know, less overall. I'm running here in the default memory configuration on the ROG LA, which carves out just 4 gigabytes for VRAM, leaving the rest for system memory. Now, I didn't do much fiddling with the settings. The previous version of Flight Sim 2020 could be tweaked really quite nicely for this device if you went full on custom graphic settings. Kind of a mix of low, high, and medium would get you kind of in a nice sweet spot. But the reason I didn't do much fiddling with the graphics on this is, well, number one, time. I'm going to stream this later on, and I'm recording this quite early in the morning, so I just wanted to get something done. <laughs> but mostly, it's because, frankly, there's no guarantee it would be super helpful for you folks when the full game launches. Like, any, any combination of settings I come up with isn't necessarily going to be the best combination uh, for the full game, because this is a technical alpha. It is running on in-development code for the build, and it is not completely representative of the final product. This technical alpha build is being used primarily to gather telemetry and feedback on the online services and stuff like the new data streaming stuff, which, on a side note, seems to be working really well, by the way. The content of this build is also limited in scope. There's just three aircraft to fly, there's no VR, and there's other missing features here and there that the final version will, of course, have fully functional. So my own intent here wasn't to make a settings guide necessarily, but more to see if there was any issues at all in getting it running, something we have to keep an eye out for, things like that, and seeing if there was any problem with just having it run, you know, decently out of the box, as it were. And yeah, good news is, zero issues. It installed without argument, it booted up easily and got to work right away. It automatically applied appropriate settings, in this case, mostly lower settings, but I'm betting there's room enough to move some of these up to medium and high, just like the previous version of the sim. It also defaulted to 720p, which is fine, but I manually moved it up to 900p to give me a noticeable pop in clarity on details like the instrument panel. Kind of important. And as I often mentioned when I do videos on games, performance and whatnot for the Ally, while in the full screen capture that I can show you, uh, I, I know it looks a bit rough, especially if you're watching this on like a desktop screen or anything. If you're watching your phone, it probably looks fine, you know? And it really is always a pleasant surprise just how good it still looks on that 7-inch 1080p screen in actual use. It hides a lot of crimes, as I always say, and I love it for that. Put the ROG Ally in its controller mode, 
and MSFS 2024 picked it up immediately as a standard Xbox controller as it should and everything worked right out of the box, no fiddling, no configuration, easy peasy. So I took a few quick flights in a few different locations including a wonderfully autumn coloured and tree dense area near Sacramento, out into some more deserty open areas and of course my own hometown of Sydney here flying around the harbour. It's still missing the iconic arch of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, unfortunately. I'm betting that's a licensing issue. Whoever, you know, owns the, owns the likeness. What, what, what do bridges have? Do bridges have likeness rights? <laughs> Whatever the legal term for that is. Uh, they're probably just asking too much money for it. Uh, but the Opera House is there. Lovely. In all its shelly glory. But yeah, one of the bugs you might notice in this technical alpha, not representative of the final game, etc, 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 is um, literally all the boats, all of the boats are currently being rendered as cruise ships, which is pretty funny in a boat-dense harbour-like circular key here. Check out the screenshot that I took on my main rig last night when I first booted up this game. <laughs> That's too many cruise ships. Those are supposed to be little ferries and, and, and personal craft. Uh, but, as you've no doubt been eyeing off, we're pretty reliably in the high 30s to low 40s when it comes to frame rate, and, and pretty consistent low to mid 30s on the ground. And that frankly is a pretty decent sweet spot for a flight sim. It's nicer, locked at 60 of course, for beautifully smooth scenery swishing by, but functionally, a 40 FPS target works rather nicely for this title. Some people will even settle for 30 FPS as a target. I'm not entirely convinced I'd share a beer with people like that. I mean, I imagine they have other rather old-fashioned ideas that I might find uncomfortable as a modern man, but hey, to each their own, right? Snark aside, 30 FPS is actually fine for this kind of title. I just don't prefer it. So, hopefully you found this useful or interesting or at the very least entertaining and gives you some hope, perhaps, if you're over there with less than bleeding edge PCs hoping that MSFS 2024 will behave on your rig. From what I've seen here, it looks pretty well behaved indeed. So, I'll let you enjoy the rest of this in peace, I suppose. Thanks to the patrons as usual. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. And thank you for flying Blunty Air again. We salute your bravery.